Hello, in today's video we're going to be talking about electron configurations as well as orbital diagrams. Now we're going to be focusing on three different, um, three different rules and I'm going to tell you the rules first and then we're going to go through a few examples of how we use these rules to identify the electron configuration as well as the orbital diagrams. So the three rules that, are going to, that are, we're going to follow as we're doing these problems, the first rule is called the off-bow principle. Um, it states that you fill from the lowest energy uh, orbital first and then start filling in the higher energy. So that's our first rule. The Pauli exclusion principle we've already talked about. No two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. We can have three of them to be the same, but the fourth one has to be different. And then Hund's rule. You're going to fill half-filled uh, orbitals first, then you will double up the electrons and fill in the rest and complete the orbital. So these are going to be our three principles that we're going to be following when we're writing electron configurations as well as orbital diagrams. Really, Hund's rule applies to the orbital diagrams and not the electron configuration. So these are our rules, these are our guidelines. I'm going to erase this and we're going to start by showing some examples. So we'll keep these in mind. Now, the off-bow principle allows us to, or tells us which of the orbitals um, are the lowest in energy and which of the orbitals are higher in energy. We know that energy increases as the principal quantum number increases. We also know that the energy increases as the angular momentum quantum number increases. So uh, using off-bow's principle, we can write out an order of our, our orbitals. So we're first going to start with the 1s. This is our lowest energy orbital. The next uh, lowest energy is going to be your 2s. After that comes your 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and then we're going to drop down to 3d, back up to 4p, and so on. Now, we don't know why this is out of order here yet, but we will. So for right now, just know that this is the order, according to Offbell's principle, how we fill. Next, we're going to count the number of total electrons in an element, let's say carbon, and we're going to write its electron configuration. Now if we look on the periodic table, we know that carbon has the atomic number of 6, which means it has 6 electrons in a neutral carbon atom, 6 electrons. So now we're going to have to fill these orbitals, according to Offbell's principle and the Pauli exclusion principle, in such a way that we fill up all six, or that we take up all six of these electrons. So really, we know that in the 1s orbital, according to Pauli's rule, you can only have two electrons in each orbital, and they have to be different. They can't have the same spin. So really, in the 1s, we only have two electrons, so we can put a two. This is our start of our electron configuration. Our principal quantum number is written first. The angular momentum quantum number in letter form is written second. And then the number of electrons that are in those orbitals is written third as the superscript. So what this is saying is we have two electrons in the 1s orbital. That is fine. We know that that can occur. Our next lowest energy is going to be the 2s. We've used up two of these electrons. So electrons. So now we have four electrons left. Same thing is going to happen here. We know that the 2s can have two different electrons. Um, so we're going to put another 2 there. Subtract two electrons. This gives you two electrons left. Now we get a little trickier. The 2p orbital. We know that the p orbital has three different orientations in space. What that means is a p orbital can contain six total electrons. Two electrons in that orbital, two electrons in that orbital, and two electrons in that orbital. We only had a total of two electrons in the s because we only had one way of drawing it. So now, this has two electrons. This one has two electrons, two electrons, two electrons. So this p can keep, uh, contain a total of six electrons. So we have only two left, so this is going to be a 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. As a chemist, we know that this electron configuration matches carbon. And so we don't have to talk about carbon, we can talk about electron configuration. 
Now, for those of you who think ahead, you can see that this electron configuration can get really long. On Monday, I'm going to teach you a way to shorten it. And it's, it's the shorthand notation for writing this. But for right now, we're going to write them all out. OK, great. So this is the electron configuration for carbon. Let's do the electron configuration for oxygen. Oxygen is eight, uh, the atomic number of eight. So it has eight total electrons in a neutral oxygen atom. We start out by putting two electrons in the 1s. We're going to fill according to this rule here. We're going to put two electrons in the 2s. We've now used up four of our electrons. We're going to put, uh, I told you before that the, the p orbital can contain six electrons. We only have four left, so we can put a total of four electrons there. So really, every orientation that this thing can take in space can hold two electrons. S only has one orientation, which is why it can only hold two. P has three orientations, which is why it total the P can hold six. D has a total of five orientations. It can hold 10. And the F has seven orientations, so it can hold a total of 14. So this is what we're going to be dealing with. This is the electron configuration. Now, if we wanted to fill in the uh, orbital diagram, we would start, and the way we do it in this class is we draw little boxes. And this is going to be what it looks like. Here we have the 1s. Here's the 2s. Here, these three are all the 2p. However, we can assign one of our, our uh, magnetic quantum numbers to this. Pl minus 1, 0, plus 1. That's where these boxes come from. Here we know that the magnetic quantum number is only a zero, so there's only one box. Here they have three, the D would have five, and the F would have seven. So now we can start filling this orbital diagram according to our, our um, electron configuration here. We start at the very bottom. We do an up arrow for the electron that spin clockwise. We do a down arrow for the electron that spin counterclockwise. We know that according to Pauli exclusion principle, you can't have the same four quantum numbers, so we take care of that by putting an up arrow and a down arrow. Okay. Next, we fill, so we fill bottom to top. Here's another two. And now the last part, we have two electrons left that have to go in the 2p. Now this is where Hund's rule comes into play. We never fill one box full first and then go to the next box. We always fill all up first, and then we start doubling up. So this would be the true electron configure or orbital diagram for carbon. This is for carbon. Okay. Let's do the exact same thing for oxygen. So we have our 1s, our 2s, and now our 2p. We have a total of eight electrons. We fill from the bottom up. We fill one up, one down, and then we fill all the way across and then double up. This is where that Hund's rule comes into play. We have two electrons here, two electrons here. Now we have four total electrons that need to go in these boxes. Now Hund's rule is, it tells us how to fill it. This one gets an up arrow, this one gets an up arrow, this one gets an up arrow. We filled half filled first, and now we're going to go back through and completely fill up the rest. This one goes down. So now what we get is we get the uh, orbital configuration for oxygen looks something like this. We have two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s, four total electrons in the 2p, but they're arranged in a very specific order. So we'll do a lot of these problems in class tomorrow. We'll do a lot of electron configurations. We'll do a lot of orbital diagrams. And really, with this orbital diagrams, it'll eventually, on Wednesday of next week, it'll tell us um, if something is able to be magnetized or not, or be able to be influenced by a magnetic field or not, based on how these orbital diagrams look. So we'll be dealing with this for a couple of days, and then we'll move on to bigger and better things. And with that, I want to say, have a great night. I will see you all in class tomorrow.